In all of the articles that I write and in the videos that I produce, my goal is always to make it as easy and memorable and enjoyable as possible to learn the actual like concepts that I'm trying to share. And so that's why I haven't turned on presentation assistant in those videos because I believe that uh, the just the constant pop up would probably be too distracting for the actual subject matter of each video. But still, we've had so many of you asking for this. And so I heard you loud and clear. So today, I'm going to walk you through some of the features, and I'm going to focus specifically on multiple cursors. Now, by far, the most common question that I get is about multiple cursors. And there are a lot of ways to use them. But for me, I almost always want to make changes to the same text. So if all you're going to do, for example, is rename a variable, definitely use the rename refactoring tools in IntelliJ to do that kind of thing. But there's sometimes where you want to do something else, like you might want to change the JVM inline value class here to a data class. And you can see here, I want to do this not just for the email, but I also want to do this for the username and the password. To use multiple cursors, you just select the text that you want, like I've got here so far, and then you can use Alt J or it looks like Control G on Mac to select the next occurrence of that text. Now you can keep tapping the same keyboard shortcut to select more occurrences of that. So you can get all three of them there. And then once you've selected the text you want, you can just type. So we can just start typing data and it goes on all three lines like that. And then when you're done, uh, you might need to get back to a single cursor here. We don't need all three of them anymore. And you just hit the escape key and boom, you're right back to that single uh, cursor. Now, there are some times when you are selecting occurrences and you didn't realize there is some other uh, occurrence of that text that you didn't want to include. So for example, here I've got this value keyword selected and maybe I want to select the next value keyword. But if I were to use that same shortcut, we actually selected this property over here. And if we don't want that, we can hit the F3 key. And what it's going to do is going to move that selection from that property down to the next occurrence of that text. And so you can see it jumps down to the line below. And so we can do that same thing again. Oops, we got the wrong one, we just hit F3, and it goes to that next one. Like I said, this is by far the most common way that I use multiple cursors by selecting the next occurrence. But there are some times where uh, you need those cursors where there's just not any good text selection to anchor to. And in these cases, you can add a new cursor by just holding down Alt and Shift and clicking wherever you want those. So I'm kind of between paragraphs here, and I'm just going to uh, hold down Alt and Shift and click in between these. And you can see we get a new cursor at each of those locations. And if you accidentally add a cursor where you don't want it, you can just hold down uh, Alt Shift still and click. So it's really a toggle. Of course, you can just uh, escape out of that. Now, if you want to add cursors just down a column, so on each row down a column, you can hold down Alt and just click and drag. And you can see that just creates cursors straight down the row. And if you've got a line where you don't have text that goes out that far, it just kind of goes wherever it can. And you can swing it to the right to uh, make a selection out that direction or swing it to the left to make a selection out that direction. Now, there are a lot of developers who like to not use a mouse if they can help it. Uh, and I'd certainly understand that because like moving your hand over to your mouse does kind of slow you down. A lot of, a lot of developers especially uh, really like just kind of keeping their hands on the keyboard. So if you prefer, you can use a double tap on the control key. So the way this works is you tap it twice and the second time that you hold that you press control, you hold it down. So tap hold, and then up arrow or down arrow. The problem is if you don't use the up arrow or down arrow fast enough after that double tap, then you'll get the uh, default behavior, which is just to go to the top or bottom of the document. So this one, I don't really use quite as much because it requires a little bit of dexterity. Um, if you if you don't double tap and hold it. And if you don't get the up or down arrow keys fast enough, then the ID is just going to cancel it out. So typically, I just go for the mouse on this one. Um, and let's see, I think that about does it for the most common things that I do here. I guess I did forget to mention that if you are selecting forward, and you want to select backwards, you can just um, hold shift down and it, uh, it pulls it back, which is also helpful sometimes. So that's a kind of a quick roundup of the most common multi-cursor operations that I use.